And in the end, we thought, yeah, let's have something we can, I don't know, which might be for some people, I don't want to say anything wrong, but we decided in the end that it might be for us easier to have something in Perl, which we can easier script or do different things with it, different analysis types, and so on. Uh, Perl is kind of flexible, because a lot of modules are already there. You can just open your UDP sockets and things like that, so you don't have to rewrite all this stuff. But one thing was missing, and that was the slow decoding module. So we had to start out with writing a module to actually decode the slow da data. The <laughs> The, basically, the datagrams I, I was showing earlier. Yeah. So this NetSlow thing is open source, and it's on CPAN. We published that a couple of months ago. Um, it has only one function, uh, decode, and you can, you can put an ASLO packet in there, and it's returning a, a, a structure of arrays and hashes with all the information, which is actually in the in the SPL sample. It was kind of difficult because there's a lot of stuff in there and the documentation is basically five pages out of what kind of hash keys you get back and how you can, yeah, and what, uh, what, what kind of information you actually get. And it's quite a lot, but it, it's still useful because it, it's quite handy to have that in, in a structure. You can just go through and, 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 and put it somewhere again. So. That was the first thing, and that was working a couple of months ago. So then I had to go on, and I wrote a sort of a daemon around it, which is not really, it's not open source yet, and it's not finished yet, but we're working on it. it, it the thing is, it's quite uh, hard to make that more usable for everybody. It's specific for the type of analysis we are doing on the platform, and it's, yeah, I, I, I'm still thinking about some ways how to make it more usable for other people as well. But it always depends on, for example, not everybody has this um, the structure of one MAC address per port. And we filter by MAC addresses, but some other exchange or some other company might not that might not be useful for them. Like it was here on 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 the Congress that it didn't make any sense to sample or to filter uh, the traffic by MAC addresses. So. I, yeah, I have to think something up how to make that more usable. So I'm receiving the packets there, I'm analyzing them, and this thing is automatically putting it into our defaults so we don't have any other databases and in between. And it was quite nice performance-wise because we have way less uh, I.O. due to the pre-processing. And yes, Perl Unpack is kind of a bit slower than C but it was it, it's still it, it's still way better for our purposes than all the other things out there just to have a look at the that's the cpu graph from our uh, from our collector server running on amzix <clears throat> and it, it depends on the amount of packets or on the amount of pa samples you get in the end how much cpu we're using but it's we can deal with that so far, so. Dan, yes. How many, uh, how many samples per second are you actually receiving with your program? You came late, I already mentioned that. <laughs> 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 I think we have uh, three and a half thousand up to four thousand samples per second right now. And with the, the total, the total uh, packet rate on the exchange is up to uh, what, what was in there? Uh, 35 million packets per second, and we sample with a sampling rate of 8K. So, of course, if you double or lower, if you lower the sampling rate, you have twice as much samples, and then the CPU would go up again. But I do have some results about the accuracy of this stuff in later on, and it's quite amazing. So, <laughs> we don't really need to have a higher sampling rate, a lower sampling rate to have more samples right now. Uh, okay, let me say some things about privacy. So we have this whole packet header in the end, and okay, it is statistically, and you only get one out of some samples, but still you could do some payload analysis on that. 
So the thing is, we are, at AM6 we only operate on layer 2, so we didn't really want to decode more. So in the end, this NetSO module is not really returning anything more. I'm only decoding the packets up to layer 2, and of course the whole packet data is in there, and it's not too difficult to rewrite it that you have the whole structure, and then you can just decode that by yourself. But we just decode the Ethernet header, and that's in the end, all we need for that. Um, and another thing is, by not writing all the data down into a database, we, we just don't have all the information. It always depends on what is actually in the code right now and what, what we want to analyze to have it. So we don't store the whole packet and we cannot look later on at the payload or stuff like that. If we, we decided now to not have more than layer 2 and we only have the layer 2 information in the RD, database files and that's it. <clears throat> so every, everything else gets like thrown away immediately after it arrives and that's all um, Same for this conference here. We, we are going to see the graphs later so I uh, added a couple of more things how to analyze this data but in the end everything else gets deleted, not even deleted because it, it was never really there. So. Okay, shiny graphs. Okay, a couple of graphs from the MZIX, uh, and in the end I'm going to show the conference graphs. Multicast traffic, so I'm filtering by multicast traffic, and if somebody is doing something wrong on a platform, even though I have to admit I haven't figured out what that was, but it stopped after 24 hours, so something was wrong. <laughs> We see a peak and we can do quite some stuff to figure out if we actually have problems or not on looking at graphs like that. <clears throat> we have the same for broadcast traffic and for different types. Okay, let's, let's go on. IPv6 traffic. We do have up to uh, 180, 160 uh, megabit per second of IPv6 traffic on the Amsterdam Internet Exchange. This, these dips every 24 hours are quite interesting because as far as I know by now, I'm still not really sure about that, uh, this traffic is mostly caused by news providers and these news providers are updating their services every 24 hours and you cannot fetch any news anymore so that's why you, this IPv6 traffic is going down every 24 hours and at the exchange. Um, the next one is an example for member-to-member -member statistics. Oh, I forgot to mention something. Uh, Sflow is only is on is sampling on the port, and it's only sampling incoming traffic on the port. So that's why I never have in and outgoing traffic. Um, but in that case, if I sample something on, if, if I, I want to map MAC addresses behind two different ports, then the traffic coming in on that port going to this MAC address is sort of the outgoing traffic for the other port, which is going to that side. So we just assume that what's coming in here, going there, is the outgoing traffic for the other way around, and that's why I can show outgoing traffic in graphs like that as well. Yeah, just a couple of examples what we actually see from member graphs. Um, accuracy. So at some point I was interested in actually having some information about is this stuff accurate or isn't it. Uh, the graph on the right is from the counters uh, made by MRTG. And the graph on the left is from S-Flow by only looking at eight, one out of 8k samples. And it is pretty much the same. I was at the same time it was, or... <laughs> yeah, almost. <clears throat> Usually I have the impression that S-Flow is always a little bit more, but things like that also depend on, 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 on packet size distribution and, and things like that. So I'm, when I get one, one packet, I'm looking at the, at the size and I just assume that all the 8K minus 1 samples I haven't seen doing that are the same size. 
So if the packet size distribution is different than the packet size distribution in the samples I have, that causes errors, of course. It's statistics, so it cannot really do better, but I think it's pretty okay for for what we actually want to do with that, because we, we are not going to, we don't want to do any billing or whatever with that. It's just information to know who's peering with who and who, what, what kind of traffic we have. Same thing for one specific interface of one member connected to M6. Also pretty nice, because all the dips there and, and in the middle are exactly the same, so. It seems to work pretty well. <clears throat> I have a quick question for you. Um, you <laughs> sure. said that you're only looking at incoming traffic. Yeah, I just said that. We only, S-Flow is only sampling incoming traffic. Okay, what would the benefit be of looking also at outgoing traffic? Sorry? What would the benefit be of also looking at outgoing traffic? Benefit? Would there be one? I don't really think so, no. Okay. No. There's a lot of people are asking when, when we put these graphs on the website and a lot of people are asking like, oh, why is that only green? I missed the blue line. They're used to that or something like that. Because <clears throat> it, it would be, in the end, it would be exactly the same because what is coming in on one port is going out on the other port again. It, or at least it, it should be like that if, you, if the switch is not dropping packets or something. So. Um, who has access to these uh, graphs that shows uh, Mac to Mac statistics? The members. All the members have access to No, all only, only the members have access to their specific graphs. Okay, thank you. We, it is, yeah, <laughs> of course people don't want to have their peering information online somewhere, <laughs> so that's kind of obvious, but to have information about, I mean, you, if, you, if you want to know something about your peering, you always have to have the second party. So, we, of course, you see your traffic going to a couple of different people, and that's it. On the website, publicly, we have the broadcast analysis, the multicast analysis, and the IPv6 analysis. That's pretty much it. Um, here. You, you mentioned that the blue line uh, should, however, reflect uh, the, the green graphs, and now we see uh, yeah, rather a far difference between the blue and the green graph. What? Um, <clears throat> you, you mentioned earlier that uh, the blue graph should reflect uh, the green graph um, yeah, uh, relatively nearly because... Um, no, 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 no. The thing is... The, this green line here, that is incoming traffic for one port on the switch. And the outgoing traffic for that port is coming from all the other different ports. Oh, okay. So if I want to have a blue line in that graph, I, have to, I would have to analyze all the other ports and find only the traffic going to this specific port and going out over that port again. So in that case, it's not that easy to, to add a blue line to that graph. <laughs> okay, thank you. But this green and this green is, in the end, the same data, one statistically anal analyzed with S-Flow and the other one from the, counter, uh, from the counters at the, from the interface. Uh, is there any <coughs> specific reason why you don't use counter packages to make the <laughs> traffic statistics. <laughs> Sorry, can you repeat your question? <laughs> uh, is there any specific reason why you don't use counter packages to make the traffic statistics? Because you have the counters in the, in the counter packages, so you can do this sort of graph, for example. And you mean counter. distribute it, get a percentage or something like that, and distribute this percentage over the actual value from the, from the counters? Is that what you mean? No, you, you said you, you assume the packet size is, is always the same to make uh, the analysis how much traffic 
is uh, going over this specific interface. Yeah. So why don't you use the counter packet from SFlow to collect that data and do the sampling of IPv6 and so on with the flow packets? You, you, could, you could do that as well. That's another possibility. But in the end, when I, <clears throat> when I was looking at these graphs, they are 